time. Yeah, he's definitely gravitating toward this road here. Yeah. Okay, they just tried to throw some spikes down. I don't know if you saw that or yeah, not. Yeah, I did. I don't know if they were able to flatten any of the tires. It doesn't appear so. Well, let's see. No, it but they made it so an attempt. Far. And now okay, it's he's as though he's back. turning into a residential neighborhood again. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. He's back into a residential neighborhood here. We'll follow him through. There's a police helicopter that's almost right. Wow. He just okay, ran into just a car. smashed into what we hope was a parked car there. Uh, looks like I'm very on the run. We can see. Oh, oh wow. And knocked out by that police car. They literally just ran him over. I don't know if you can pull back, Dave. We, I know it's very heavily wooded there. But now you can see all the police cars jumping. Uh, uh, people are leaving the police cars and trying to get to him. But as we saw just a moment ago, he was literally knocked to his feet by a police car. And I Get to a dramatic end here. Absolutely. And it did appear to be just one person in a white shirt with a red hat. That's correct. Nine officers uh, above him at this point, handcuffing him. And you can see he has definitely been brought uh, to the ground here after that long chase. Don't know if he was injured when he was hit by that uh, police car, but at this point he's going to have a lot of help from all of these different police officers to walk over to the back of a squad car. Again, this went on for a full 40 minutes all around the northwest side of town. We saw him getting on and off of uh, 249, the North Freeway going both directions. Um, certainly Bamel North Houston often traveling on the wrong side of the road at a very high rate of speed. Fortunately, did not hit anyone until that very last uh, shot that we saw. So apparently, Dave, maybe those strip, uh, the, the strips that they threw down did work and caused his truck to veer out of control. It's possible, but he uh, he got he, he was hit by that police uh, vehicle that came into that front yard pretty hard. But he seems to be okay. They'll probably call for an ambulance for precaution, but they finally have him in custody. Well, he does appear to be limping just a little bit now. This, he is no small man, we can certainly say that, but uh, was not able to move fast enough to escape the police by any stretch of the imagination. And we did see that uh, that police car just take him out by literally knocking him across the hood and to the ground, and they were able to take him into custody. And now we get some sense of just how much manpower has been devoted to this chase for the last 40 minutes. Uh, we are told not only Houston police officers, but also county officers involved in the chase. And as we pull back, we can see, what, eight, nine, perhaps ten officers. Now, this is how it ended just a few moments ago. If you were watching, you turned back into a neighborhood just off of Bamel, North Houston. We see him kind of careening around that curve and bam, right into what we are hoping is a parked car. It appears to just be parked in front of a house there. He jumps out, attempts to run across, and bam, there goes the police car knocking him to his feet. And that's when all the other officers moved in to take him into custody to, to handcuff him. Um, and we should mention, it does appear he was not hurt seriously, although I'm certain that knocked the wind out of him. Uh, you are looking live again as they uh, search him, I imagine, for any weapons, any, any possibility of something that might injure them or him. And you can see all of the officers that were involved in this chase, both Houston police officers as well as county officers, as we bring this police chase to an end. And there he goes into the back of the squad car there uh, with a lot of help but does not appear to have been injured. Um, again, this, uh, raid, this, this police chase took place for at least the last 40 minutes, but did come to a safe end. No one else appeared to be hurt, and he does not appear to be seriously injured, but we'll have a lot more on this story coming up on Eyewitness News at 4. Let's go back to the end of your soap opera.